the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. On this second Sunday of the month, we are in our little church in Bradmore, where we'd normally have a service at nine o'clock on this Sunday. And it's the first Sunday after Trinity. In it, we hear Jesus sending out his apostles. He sends us out too. Too often we are unwilling to hear his voice and to go where he sends us. So as we begin our service, let us recall our sins and ask him for forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God and highest praise, his people sing on us, worship and thanks to you we raise, grant peace our world's new birth. Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb once slain, to take away all sin, have mercy on our selfish pain, your love, O people, win. For you are God, the Holy One, you are the Lord Most High, who with the Spirit prays as one in Father's glory night. Let us pray that we may be obedient to Christ's command. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to hear the readings that you have sent us from the places where you are. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, 
If you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 100 The response is, We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Romans 5, 1-8 Peace and hope. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. 
James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the wilderness of Sinai, God commissioned the twelve tribes of Israel to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. This is what we heard about in our first reading. But what does it mean to be a priestly kingdom or a holy nation? What indeed did it mean to be a priest? They offered prayers and sacrifices on behalf of the community. So a priestly nation must be making those offerings on behalf of a wider community, on behalf of the world, God's creation. Israel was a holy nation with a mission on behalf of the world to pray for it, to offer sacrifices for creation, to bring the world closer to God. This is why God chose this people. It is why he rescued them from Egypt and showed them his love. Because of this, the psalmist believes the whole earth should be joyful in the Lord. As Jesus travelled around the cities and villages of Israel, he summoned twelve disciples and gave them authority to be apostles. Later on, St Paul described himself and Barnabas as apostles. But in the Gospel stories, the number is limited to twelve, and that is clearly significant. It echoes the twelve tribes of Israel, because this is the new Israel. The church of which these apostles are the foundation stones has become that priestly kingdom and a holy nation. St Peter puts it like this, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. We can be quite specific about the tasks that are involved in this. In our Gospel reading we hear what Jesus himself did. We hear what authority he gave to the Apostles. And we hear the instructions he gives when he sends them out. Jesus taught, proclaimed the good news of the kingdom and cured people. He had compassion on people who were like sheep without a shepherd. He gave the apostles authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. He instructed them to proclaim, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. What does all this mean for us today? We know about curing diseases, so we might want to include under that heading some problems which the NHS can't cure. But what about demons? Some people still talk about them. Most people aren't really very sure about evil spirits occupying our world. 
But there clearly are demons of a sort to be cast out. Fear, division, racism, oppression, violence, inequality. We can all add to that list. Now the sort of things that St Paul lists as works of the flesh to be contrasted with the fruits of the Spirit. They're demonic because they oppose God's love, the love which has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. This life of love, filled with God's Spirit, is the kingdom that we are called to proclaim. Because the commission was not just for those first apostles, it's a task for us too. Every time you come to the end of the creed and proclaim we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, you're acknowledging that we have been sent out. That's what apostolic means. We've been sent out just like those first apostles. Each time you say those words, you're accepting Christ's commission. Now you might be fearful about this mission. It seems like hard work. But Jesus has an answer. The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. In the days before machinery, everyone was needed for the harvest. Other work stopped so that you could gather it in. Our school holidays still coincide with this time and it's no accident. Farmers have the expertise to prepare the soil, sow the crops and nurture them. But it was all hands on deck when the harvest was ready. The same is true of the Gospel. God has done the hard work. While we were still weak, Christ died for the ungodly. Our job is to gather in the harvest, to proclaim the kingdom that he has already established. The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. To him be honour and glory now and for ever. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We pray and give thanks for the leadership of the church, as they and we minister to the community in these difficult times. We pray for our clergy, and all those who bring services to us, 
as we continue to worship our Lord, may those who watch this service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the country as we move to relax the restrictions. May we all play our part in keeping people safe. We pray for the skills of those who are conducting research and are developing a vaccine. We pray in particular for the way we see others, remembering that we are created in God's image. Help us to reduce racism as we become aware of the effects our attitudes have on others, all of whom were created by God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are planning and helping to open our church for private prayer. We pray for those who have been isolated for the past two months and for the strain that they have experienced. We pray for all the numerous people who are working for charities to bring relief and comfort to those who are in trouble. We pray for those working for the Katanini charity as they raise awareness of the needs of those in the villages in Kenya. May the financial help they need be of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. For the carers, the doctors, and in particular for the midwives and the health workers who have no need to bring advice and help to new mums and dads now having to do this online. For the police and the armed forces putting themselves at risk to help to contain the virus and keep us safe. We pray for all in our services as they cope with the backlog of medical cases. May God give them strength to continue in these difficult and stressful times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, for those this week who live and work in Willowbrook, and in particular the teachers, staff and children of Willowbrook Primary School, as they welcome some children to return, protect them from infection and help them to cope with the changed environment. We pray for all families as they continue to inspire and tutor children who are not able to return to school. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn loved ones who have completed their earthly life. May they be comforted. We pray for the recently departed and their family and friends. In particular, we pray for the family and friends of Derek McNally. We also remember those who are recorded in the Key West Book of Remembrance, Helen Elizabeth Warren and Raymond Green. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If we take a moment of quiet reflection, we ask God to help us in our Christian lives as we show the love of God to those we need. Merciful Father, accept these prayers 
for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full. splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son Jesus Christ you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own he set us free from the bonds of sin that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave up himself for us all. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body 
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with Mary, the Mother of God, Mary Magdalene, the Apostles and all your saints, at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Last Sunday we were woken with news that it would be possible from this week to open our churches for time of private individual prayer. Caught slightly on the hop by that and we've had to have impromptu PCC meetings to get an idea of what we might do next. The details of that will be available on our website and do bear with us. There's lots of 
um, stuff that we must do to make sure that we're ready to do that in a safe way. And we also need some volunteers. Most of the people who regularly volunteer would be placed in a moderate risk group by the government. That's people with certain underlying health conditions or just being over the age of 70. So if you're not in that group and you'd like to help and ensure that we can be open for a period of time each week in our different churches, probably just Bunny and Keyworth, then do contact me and we'll do our best to make sure that we can make that possible. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.